when I show a dog, I take this loop and put it on my pinky. And I wrap this up and down like this until this comes out the bottom like that. What the goal is, is to take your hand down the center of the mat without making this chain swing. When you get to here, you back up, step away from your dog, and bring your hand back to the judge. See how smooth that was? When you get to the judge here, a lot of times people have a, a choice of doing a courtesy turn, or how do you, you take off? I always back away from all situations because this is going to put you in a position of being in control. So you're backing away, you step away from the dog, and you take your dog to the end. This is an exercise that whether you think you're great or not, you should always practice this to see how smooth your gait is. And you'll be doing this at your gating speed of your breed. Stop looking at your imaginary dog. Look straight ahead. Okay, go. And you have a Briard, right? That's a very slow Briard. <laughs> now back away. And then bring your dog back to me. Good. Now see how that's swinging all over? That's an indication of what you're doing to your dog's neck. So if the chain is hanging straight, your hand is smooth. If the chain is swinging, then you're putting too much pressure on that dog's neck. Okay, now stop. Don't move. Whose buttocks is in the center of the mat? So you want to make sure that the dog is in the center of the mat. Okay, come back to me. Very nice. Now one thing I want to change with you, and this is very, very common with a lot of people, is as you're gating, you're gating with short choppy steps like that. Your dog will duplicate that. So what I want you to do is smooth that out with longer steps like this. See the difference there? Okay, so longer steps around to the end. Very nice. Come back. Okay, so what breed do you have? Toy Poodle. Toy Poodle. Okay, stand over here like you're the judge. All right. So what you did looked good, but the problem is, is it going to send the wrong signal, especially to a short dog? Because you went like that. And when you went like that, what's that doing? Exactly. So if you have a Chihuahua, that's going to be, he's going to be going, whoa, like that. So what I want you guys to do is back away from your judge, step away from the dog, and take your dog straight. See how smooth that is? And it keeps that dog in a straight line. What, if you go to the shows and you watch the people showing the dogs, they're doing this stuff. They'll come around like this, and your dog is not straight till it gets almost halfway down there. You want the judge to see a straight dog for as long as possible. Especially if they stick you in those little bitty rings. The other thing too, when you back up like this, who are you looking at right now? You're looking at me. Right. So when my dog looks good, I'll step away. And now who are you looking at? The dog. So that I can control what the judge sees and what the judge doesn't see by doing it this way. Okay, so back away from me. Oh. So back away from me. No, come back. Okay, you want your dogs to be square and gate straight. This is what you're doing. You're, you're turning your body, and as you're backing, you're turning. The dogs want to square up on you. So your dog, to square up, is going to be crooked. I'm sending very mixed signals here. Exactly. You're, you're telling the dog to do all kinds of stuff at the same time, and your dog's freaking out. Okay, what you need to do is stand straight, go backwards, because it's going to square up on your shoulders, and when your dog is straight, you step away and go. 
But if you guys turn prematurely, your dog's going to try to square up on you. And you're not going to see a straight dog till you get here. Okay, so face me as hard as it is. Okay, now walk backwards. Don't turn. Now stop. You want to turn so bad. But here, here's what your dog's going to do. My dog goes and go crazy. Right. So now your dog's like this. Is this where you want your dog to be? And I'm also the judge isn't looking at me anymore either. Right. And now your judge is seeing a dog that's like this, gating that way. Can you guys see that with her shoulders? Okay. Now come back. Okay. Your shoulders should be square with mine. And I'll be your dog. Okay. So back up. I'm, I'm straight. So what do you want to do now? So you turn and go. Now she's afraid to turn. <laughs> yeah, that was good. So what he said is to get behind the judge. Go around them. Yeah, yeah. Yep, get behind the judge so they can get that straight line. But if you go like this, now you've got a narrow spot right here. And now you've got to try to get the dog straight. And the judge is looking at the dog the whole time. So it may see it do any one of these things here. But if I stand in front of you, and I back up, it's straight, right here. Now I step away, and all you see the whole time is a straight dog. So which one would be better? Yep. It's efficiency there. Here's one common mistake here. When you back up, you don't want to swing your dog like this. Because then now who's in the center? You back up and step away from the dog and keep that dog in the center, like that. Okay, so face that way and then come back to me again. Okay, come back to me. Good. Okay, around to the end. Nope, you're already into a turn again. Again, you got to remember that this dog is going to want to keep squaring up in front of you. So if you turn too quick, and the judge is here, what angle is the judge going to see this dog at? So we do two steps back and then a turn. Yep, do a couple of steps back, dog is straight, now turn and go. Put the dog between us, step back, step away from your dog, that was gorgeous. Good. Okay, dog in front of you, step back, turn and go, fantastic. All the way around to the end. No, 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 no. Back away from this corner. You did it perfect until you blew it right there. Okay, now back away, go. Good. Good. There you go. That was gorgeous. If the judge wants you to continuously go and not stop, people do this. The problem is, when you do this, is your dog going to be straight? No. But if they say, keep going, all you have to do is, okay, you go to here, you walk backwards, step away from your dog, and you go. So this is one exercise to give you an idea of where your coordination is at. Now, if you can't do this, then you should not have a dog in your hand yet. Because this is going to send a lot of signals to this dog. So I want to see this dog down and back, please. Whoa. Here you go. Okay, can I borrow your dog for a second? All right, everybody, heads up here. We have a dog that's very headstrong. So what I want to do is I want to train this dog to walk on a loose lead. It's not going to learn to walk on a loose lead when you try to control it. But it's not going to be pretty when you, pra ah, 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 when you practice it. So what you want to do is ignore this dog. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the motions of what I want to do. 
I don't care what the dog is doing at this point. I'm going to be consistent at what I'm doing. What happened? What did you do? Oh my goodness, can you get out of that? Kind of, sort of. You're just like really putting yourself in a bind, aren't you? Ah, 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 ah. Settle down. See, they've got to learn to get out of this stuff because they're putting themselves in these situations. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to do this again. Wait. Good job. Let's go. Wait. Ah. Let's go. Wait. Ah, ah, ah. You got to get yourself out of that. You keep putting yourself in there. Get yourself out. Get yourself out. Come on. Come on. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, ah, ah. Wait. 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 Let's go. Wait. Good. Let's go. Wait. Wait. Turn. Wait. Wait. Let's go. Good. Good. Wait. What happened? Let's go. Turn. What happened? You need to pay attention to me, don't you? Wait. Turn. Let's go. Wait. Let's go. Wait. Let's go. Turn. Good. Good. Wait. 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 Good. Okay, so take, go ahead and do the head straight. Do the head straight. You got him? Okay, don't grab skin, do the head straight. Okay. What this dog is doing is it's trying to figure out this pecking order here. So the second it went back over to mom, it tried to establish dominance. So what she has to do is the head straight and then gate on a loose lead. So gate on a loose lead. Beautiful. Loose lead back to me. That was fantastic. He can't do it. <laughs> right, but he's not going to do it if you keep pulling tight. So what you, and it's not going to look pretty in the beginning, guys. You're going to have to just take a leap of faith to do this. I have one issue, question of, mm -hmm. I have a champion male. So he goes in first, then I go with champion male, then I go back in, and he has to go back in. Now, if I've won with the champion male as well, someone else takes him in and he goes absolutely nuts. He he's not ready to show. He needs to be trained. So once he's trained and he goes back in, that will not be a problem. So do you see the difference right there? 
This dog needs head straight gate, head straight gate, head straight gate, over and over and over. This is pre-qualification before he's even ready to show. Can he go to a show and win? Absolutely. But do you want it to be spectacular? That's the difference right there. I would spend a lot of time with this dog just walking all over the place on a loose lead and doing the head straight. Okay, take him around to the end. On all the way, hold the very end of the lead and that's it. Look at that guys, give her a hand. Wasn't that beautiful? It was like a different dog right there. Now you're, you're giving, you're putting too much pressure on him with your eyes. You got, it, you got his attention before you went and you're doing the eye contact when he needs to focus on this right here. You could have this dog trained in a couple of weeks easily. But when he does that, do that head straight again. Let him know who's in charge. Okay, what is this dog telling you with her body language? Go down and back again. Can anybody tell me what this dog is saying? But the main thing is the dog's trying to get away from her. The dog wants more lead. So she's got a six foot lead and she's using three feet of it. So you have to read that and say, okay, I'm gonna adjust for this. I want you to do that again, but this time use the whole six feet. Keep your hand down. Ta -da! So that time the dog went perfectly straight. Okay. Do you see the difference right there? So now, if you got the dog perfectly straight, instead of six feet, maybe try five feet. Okay. Maybe try four feet. But get it to a happy medium where the dog is still straight. But when she was holding the lead in half, the dog was saying, this is not, I'm not comfortable with this. Okay, so try five feet and take her around to the end and see if you can keep her straight. Keep your hand down. That's gorgeous. Okay, everybody get your dogs lined up according to speed. You've got five seconds to stack these dogs. One 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, four 1,000, and stop. Okay, praise your dogs. One at a time. Back up and go. Oh, that's gorgeous. We, as handlers and trainers, create the problems. Or we, as handlers and trainers, can fix the problems. We have a choice. You've seen so far this morning that what happens when we establish eye contact. It creates so many problems that we have to fix later on. But what do people tell us when we train dogs? You need to watch your dog. Look at your dog. Look at your dog. Pull up on the lead so you can control your dog. Everything you've been taught is creating all these problems. You saw with people today that if they didn't look at their dog, if they had good body posture, good hand position, the dogs did beautiful. And in a situation like with Adobe, I mean, that was, that was gorgeous there. I mean, in the beginning, if I was a judge, I could not judge that dog because it was just cranking into that lead. But that last go around was phenomenal. 
I mean, just absolutely. And imagine if she would take that dough and for weeks or months just walk it at the end of a six foot lead. How amazing that dog will be to show. What's that? Yeah, yeah, I'll see you in six months. I'll go to the show and I'll be standing right there ringside. <laughs> Best in show, there you go. Absolutely. But I need you guys to just really do a, do a checkup where you're thinking body posture, hand position, eye contact, yes, no, whatever. These are things that you need to check because if you do it incorrectly, you're going to create more problems to fix later on. Now group two is going to be amazing because they had all this opportunity to watch group one go through all the rough stuff, right? Okay, so what I want to happen now is group two is going to grab your dogs. We're going to do the head straight part first so I can see that you know that hand position. And then we're going to show group one how it's done. Okay, so we've got two fingers here, right where that ring's at. We got thumb and forefinger, and the pinky's going over the tag end. And when we make a correction, it's head straight, head straight. Okay? Right. Okay, so go practice that. Two behind. Two. One underneath. Yep. And one around. And thumb and forefinger like this, head straight. Okay, so go practice that. Okay, everybody relax for a second. We have a little adolescent here who is going to be testing the pecking order and wants to figure out where this dog sits and is going to push buttons as much as possible. A lot of times people say he's nervous, he's afraid or anything. That's not the case here. This dog is not nervous and the dog is not afraid. He's pushing buttons. So the best way to overcome this is to do the head straight. You want it? This is a tantrum. Go ahead and have your tantrum. Okay, see all that twisting and body stuff right there? I'm gonna let him do all he wants. Good, okay, good, 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 good. Come on, come on, woohoo, yay. Okay, come on, come on, woohoo. Now this is something he's gotta get over and you just don't show any emotion whatsoever when he does this. It's like, let him get it out of the system, come on, good. Good, that's good, good job, there you go, good. Okay, so we're gonna do the head straight now. So we got the collar, we got the pinky, head straight, ah, 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 This is something that needs to be addressed a lot because this dog, if he grows up with this attitude, you're going to have a lot of problems. Ah, 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 ah. Are you done? Come on. Come on. Head straight. Head straight. There we go. Head straight. Good. Get your muzzle down. Head straight. Good. Good. Come on, good, come on, good, head straight. Now why are you being a little butt? You don't have to be a little butt. You'll be much better and a lot more handsome if you're not a little butt. Yes, there's no reason for that. Not at all, good job, good job. See how I'm easing into this right here? You have to get control. You can't show any emotion because he's trying to test to see if he can get to me. That was good. That was great. Okay, let's try that again. Good job. Good job. That was good. Yeah, good. Okay, let's do the head straight again. Head straight. Uh-uh, head straight. Good. That was good, yeah! We need a treat. Do you have a treat? Can you see him starting to settle there? Oh, 
Oh, look at that. Ah, you're not going to mom. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Oh my, back up, back, back, back. You're too close, you're too close. Oh, ah, 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 easy, easy, easy. There you go, see that? That's a good puppy. This way, this way, this way. Stand, stand, stand. Oh, look at you, easy. Ah, ah. Good job. You can learn. That's good. Okay. Good. Right here. Good. Head straight. Head straight. Oh, that's good. Muzzle down. Good job. That was good. Yeah. Very good. Okay, here's another treat. Uh-uh, I didn't tell you to go over there. Follow my hand. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh, -uh, uh, -uh. Very nice. Good. Okay, come over here. Ah! 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 Okay, go ahead and do the head straight. Good! Pinky goes over the tag end. There you go, so those three fingers are together. Good. There you go, keep that head straight. Head straight? Yep, now praise him. Good boy, good boy. Okay, here you go, you grab the lead. Don't let him put his paw on you. Don't let him stand on you. This dog does not have a problem of being shy, and he's not nervous. He's trying to figure out where he's at in the pecking order here. So as soon as she, look at what he's doing right there. Do the head straight. Don't let him get away with that. So what's happening is he's standing on her. He's leaning against her. He's jumping on her. And when he did that to me and tried to bite me, did I show any emotion? No. I'm like, okay, get, get over this. And once you get over this, We'll do the head straight, and then he finally let me do the head straight. And then when I gave him a treat, what did he do? He just tried to snap at it. And I popped him on the side of the mouth and let him know, I'm the one that's in charge. You're going to get this on my terms. So we've got to calmly work through these things and not show any emotion. Let's go. This way. This way. This way. This way, back, this way, this way, ah, 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 good. This way, good, this way, good. Okay, there you go, take him. Okay, I want you to go through these cones right here and your palm is wherever you want that dog to go. So if I want the dog to go this way, I point my palm out this way. If I want my dog to go this way, I point the palm this way. So go ahead and take him down and back through the cones. Good, 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 beautiful. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, around to the end, good job. Okay, go through the cones. Over, don't wait, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Okay, is this dog focusing on your hand? Not at all, put this in your hand. Okay, let her smell it and do it again.
There it is. There it is. See the difference there? You're training them to focus on that hand. Just keep going. We'll figure that out. She's like, dum da dum da dum da dum da dum. Okay, get that out of her back foot there. Now, you're going to take her around. I'm only going to explain this once. So if you're not paying attention, you're not going to get this. You're going to take her to that corner. You're going to signal and you're going to palm in before you hit that corner. That's going to cause her to turn. So go ahead and take her around to the end. See that turn right there, guys? Good job. Beautiful. Now, she almost missed that. And the reason why is when you were gating to that corner, you hid your hand. They can't see a signal if you hide your hand. You've got to have that hand out so they can focus on it. All right, so we're stacking our dogs, whether it's a table dog or a dog that's on the ground. The very first thing you need to do is get that head straight. Because if you don't have that head straight, you don't have control of the dog. The most common mistake that most people make when they're stacking their dog is they take this leg and they put it forward like that. Once you do that, you lose your front. Now the best way to stack a front leg is to take your hand, put it in front of the shoulder. I'll spin the dog this way too. Put it in front of the shoulder and swing it back till it's off the table. Then when you set it down, isn't that right under the withers now? Take your palm and then you pull back and set that, let that foot touch the ground and it puts it straight down where the withers is at. Now, sometimes you'll have a dog that wants to twist the foot this way or twist the foot that way. The toes follow the nose. So let's say I bring my nose this way and then I set that foot down. Where does that make that foot point? In this way. Or sometimes you don't pay attention and you let the dog get distracted and so I stack that and where does that point the toes now? Points it out that way. So you have to be aware of where these toes and the nose are pointed. Sometimes you have a dog that when you're going to stack the dog, it automatically just points one toe in, wrong, in a wrong direction. So you compensate by moving the muzzle when you do that. So I set this front, ah, 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 head straight. Good. Then when you set the rear, you're grabbing it right here at the hock joint and supporting it. And I usually pull up first and that helps create angulation right here. If I just slide this back, see how that straightens that leg out? So I take this, bend the stifle, set this down, and then I'm going to push weight onto that foot so the dog can't lift that off. Pick this up, set this down, push weight onto that foot so the dog can't lift that foot back up. That's called loading the foot. From the neck here, I'm pushing it against that back portion right there. I'm pushing it, I'm putting weight on that foot. Because when I lift this up, now the weight is balanced on the other three legs. So if I just let this go down, then the dog's going to move it all over because there's no weight on that. So if I take this and I put it where it's supposed to go and then push against it, now the dog can't lift that foot up. Isn't that cool? Now the other thing you want to be able to practice when you're stacking these dogs is being able to fix feet without touching them. So let's say I want to move a foot. Boom. I can move that foot. Now I'll bring this one over a little bit. You are one stubborn little dog. Put it down. There you go. Good. See I shift it back and forth to move these feet. And it'll take a little practice. And remember, this dog has not accepted me as the head straight yet. So I have to make sure that before any real training takes place, I can do that head straight without this dog fighting me. Let's check this gauge here, head straight. Look at that. <laughs> Is this dog ready? 
No. Once this dog stops fighting me and stops putting the paw on there, now this dog is ready for training. So this dog's not even ready for training yet because right now the dog doesn't respect me. Head straight. Good. Seeing those ears pinned back like that, that's not going to look very attractive in the show. I'm not going to get the expression. Now the worst case scenario, you go into a show, your dog hasn't been trained, you don't have the head straight, and you do this. Now you have no control of the head and you go right back to square one. And this is what everybody else does. Don't fall into that category. Get your dogs trained and then start to show them like that. Okay, now we also have another thing. Go ahead and grab your dog, please. Take your dog. Let me have the golden over there. Watch that bait. <laughs> that was pretty trusting. <laughs> yeah, 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 come over here. If you have a larger dog, and you want to get that larger dog set up to show quicker than the rest of your competition, there's a little thing called the push-pull. And what this does is this allows you to gate over to your location where you're going to show, and, you're, and now you're going to get that dog so it stacks so you can quickly do that head straight. So you're gating your dog, moving in a direction, and you push-pull like that. And what you're doing is you're pushing against the cheek and you're pulling on that, the lead at the same time. When you do this, it has to be level. It can't be back and it can't be forward and it can't be up. Okay, so let's try that again. Stand, stand, stand. Good. See, just like that. Good job. That was good. That's why I picked a golden. Yes. I'm going to teach you how to train your dogs to come back to a baiting judge. It's important that you stop away from the judge as far as the judge is tall. So you'll be stopping about six feet away from me. <laughs> wow. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. What's your dog's name? Hugo. Hugo? Yeah. Okay, down and back. Wow, looks like a different dog. Hugo. Okay, too close, way too close. Do that again. <laughs> Hugo. Okay, you pulled up. And what did the dog do? It's, you have to be real subtle. Okay, go with her. Hugo. Not bad, still a little bit close. Very good, okay, around to the end. This dog's doing great. Okay, down and back. What's her name again? Really? 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 <laughs> Agnes. Agnes, that's it. Okay. Agnes. Agnes. Oh, don't you look pretty. Yeah, I'm trying to. Here, you get a big piece. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Okay, take Agnes around to the end. But isn't that pretty? This is how you teach dogs to do perfect free stacks. What you do is you start at one end of a room like this. You let your dog see the bait. You walk backwards and then you stand. Very nice. Good job, finicky little turd. Yes. Okay. I lean forward, I walk backwards, and then I stand. Very nice. Good job. You little turd. It's right there. 
<laughs> now here's the critical part of this. If you stand up and you walk backwards, what are you telling your dog? Are you telling your dog to come? If you stand up and you walk backwards, you are not telling your dog to come. You must lean forward, walk backwards. And if you go like this, you're not telling your dog to stay. You have to stand up and then stay. Your words don't mean anything. It's your body language that means everything here. You want to have the bait in front of you. You want to have the bait in the lead hand so you can hold it back here and put a stop sign out and say stay. It's like here's the bait, stay. You don't want to have the bait like this and say stay because then they're going to come to you. The other thing I do not want to see is you holding this in your right hand and pulling the lead up because that does not teach a dog to do perfect free stacks. Bait goes in the lead hand, walk backwards, lean forward, and stand. Now, here's another thing. Let me have the pug out here for a second and just kind of stand right here. Watch my hand position. When I separate my hands, ooh, the pug doesn't know where to look. But when I put my hands together, See the difference in intensity? So try, that's why I don't like you guys going like this with the lead because you don't get focused that way. So I want everybody to grab some bait, go off into a different section where you have plenty of room, lean forward, walk backwards, and stand, and let's practice these free stacks. And I'll come around and help you out. See what you got. Lean forward, walk backwards, and stand. Good job. Let me borrow your baby for a second, and you're gonna stand like you're the judge. Okay, pay close attention. I'm only gonna show this one time. So basically what I'm doing here is I've got my bait in my lead hand. I'm gating towards the judge. I signal to stay back. I lean forward and stand. Stand. And that way the judge can see this dog. Stay. Stay. Ah, ah, ah. Back up, back up, back up. You're too close. Come on, come on, come on. Too close. And stand. And that way the judge can see this dog in front. So you're going to do a down and back, turn around, lean forward, walk backwards, and stand so the judge can see. Okay? Let's see you down and back. I'm sorry, I fell asleep there for a second. <laughs> God, look at her use that loose lead. That's beautiful. Okay, so now you're going to have to time it. Lean forward, walk backwards, and stand. Stand. So all she's got to do is teach the dog to stay. Wasn't that beautiful right there? Give her a hand. Good job. Okay, around to the end. Good. That's gorgeous. All right, let's see you down and back. I hope you all saw the value of having that head straight. You cannot effectively train your dog until you've done that. Everything else is going to be just hit or miss. We've seen, I've seen some amazing dogs in here today, and I've seen some amazing challenges in here today. But I have not seen anything that can't be overcome. I mean, some of the transformations, the Doberman, at the beginning of the day, remember what a knucklehead that was? And then her last go around in the stack, I mean, look, drop dead gorgeous. So these dogs will learn. It just takes patience and time to do that. You two probably have the toughest situations here, but it's not a problem. It's not a problem that is not going to be able to overcome. 
the differences that you made in your little headstrong little brat were fantastic. You know, that dog was a little turd this morning and she told it F-O and, <laughs> and that last go around was just dynamite right there. So the key factor and the common den denominator is you have to do things perfectly. When I say not above your belly button, it does not mean you can go here. It has to be here. When I say get the head straight and then get the dog to start focusing on your hands, it doesn't mean some of the time. It means if you don't get that dog to focus on that hand, then anything else you're doing is a waste of time. Especially you see those people that gate their dogs and they're holding their, their leads back here like this. There's no communication going on. This is all steering. Kind of like your dog in the beginning of the day. That dog was just bull in a china shop. But at the end of the day, you started gating on that loose lead. That looked gorgeous right there. And it's not going to happen overnight. You have to have patience. You have to take time. People are in too much of a hurry to show their dogs. And if I go to a show, I see most of the people at the dog show are not ready to have those dogs at that show. None of the dogs here today were ready to be at a show. Some of them are maybe champions, some of them win pretty good, but it doesn't mean you're getting the fullest potential out of those dogs. And that's what this whole workshop is about. I want you guys to go to these dog shows and dominate these shows. I want when you show up, they're going, oh crap. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess reserve is available unless you can't show up with two dogs. So these things are not going to get better if you take the workshop today and don't practice. You have to practice. Head straight, loose lead. Do the head straight till your hand falls off. Do it multiple times a day. Then go places where you're going to walk your dog on a six foot lead, flat link chain, and just get them to start focusing on your hand. Go watch some agility. Go to YouTube and look at agility and watch those people's hands and watch how they're communicating. That is what you're looking for right there. I have not seen a dog in here today that can't be at that level. I mean, you got some gorgeous dogs in here today. There were some gorgeous moments. What do you guys feel is going to be the most difficult for you to go to that next level? Control my body. Your body, exactly. You got to understand and be aware of what your body is saying and not just what your mouth is saying. Because a lot of you are talking gibberish with your body language and the dogs will get to the point where they're just like like that and you don't want that you never have a situation you never have a situation where you run into a point where you say I can't do this or my dog won't bait <laughs> your dog was ready to take my hand off with yeah. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna bronze that and hang that on a wall right there there's no such word as can't there's no such word as won't you know you have to if you want to be top winning handlers out there you have got to find the solution to the problem Einstein said that he was not the most intelligent person in the world. What he did say is that he was the most persistent. And the reason why he was successful is because he never gave up. You know, where other people will say, there's just no solution to this. Einstein kept going and kept going until he found the solution to a problem. Now, what we have here is a bunch of little Einsteins. And all you guys got to do is stick to it, and I promise you, you're going to have so much fun. You know, people say, you know, I go, why do you show dogs? Because it's fun. 